Hey, hey, Push Run Nation, Dr. Dave here. Peace, fresh off the trail and in with a new 150-mile review of the Zigama Trail from Nike. Let's check it out. Okay, thank you for tuning in today. Coming in for another shoe review after 150 miles. And this shoe we're going to be looking at is, I'm now convinced, is built like a tank. Originally, when I first started wearing this shoe the first time, I got to tell you, I really didn't like this shoe. It was pretty firm, even with the ZoomX foam, but ZoomX foam for trail shoes from Nike are not the same as ZoomX foam for road shoes, which in the Alpha Fly and Vapor Fly, a lot softer, a lot lighter than in the Zidama Trail. But that's the way all the companies are with their phones that are named the same as their road shoes. In the trail shoes, obviously a little bit firmer to add in a durability factor. In, but with the Zoom X foam, after about 50 miles, I really started to feel that it was starting to soften up. And now we're at over 150 miles. It really is. For those beginners out there who are looking for a good shoe, rugged shoe that's going to last the miles, this should be on your radar to check out because a lot of great features in the shoe. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to watching my videos, I'd appreciate it. If you get something good out of this, at least one good thing, hit that like button down below and think about subscribing so you'll be able to see all the videos we put out every week. And put a comment down below, I subscribe, and I guarantee you that I'll respond to you and ask me any running related questions you may have. So let's get into the shoe. Let's start down in the midsole. We've got 37.5 millimeters of Zoomix foam trail in the heel and 33.5 millimeters in the forefoot for a more four millimeter drop. On the outsole, we've got four millimeter lugs. Now, before anyone goes and puts comments down below crying BS, you didn't wear those shoes 150 miles. I've got to tell you that I take very good care of my shoes after wearing them, no matter whether a road shoe or trail shoe. I clean them off with soap and water, the soles, and before filming of a shoe that I've been wearing for a while, I clean them off with a toothbrush and baby wipes, and it cleans it all up. And I'll tell you what lets your shoe last a lot longer than if you let them sit around with a bunch of dirt and grime all over the shoes. So if you do that with all your shoes, trail and road, you may get a hundred or more miles out of them. So keep that in mind. So let's look at the upper. Engineered mesh upper, almost a plasticky feel, very aerated, but what I had thought was going to happen when wearing these on a sandy trail system at one of the state parks about 10 miles from where I live, I thought this, the very light sand on the trails was going to go right through this, which a lot did. But what Nike integrated into the shoe from this black mark here all the way across the front and over to here, I'm going to call it an inner gator inside the shoe, which traps any sand, dirt, debris that may go through the air holes. So it's not going to go into your foot. Now, that's not to say it may not travel up and down once it gets way up to your ankle, but if you secure the shoe well enough, that probably won't happen. So aerated top, very nice. In the deep south, South Carolina, where I live over the summer times, this was a great shoe in the summer because it did let a lot of air through the shoe. My feet didn't heat up at all. has a very nice rubberized, heavy rubberized, I should say, toe guard all along the front here. Nice kick plate, heavy rubberized kick plate on the toe. The shoelaces are semi-stretchy, which is very nice. 
up here along the lacing system, very well reinforced with rubber. The tongue is very nicely padded, which I really like because on my road shoes, I don't cinch them very tight, but I do on my trail shoes. And this is probably the most padded tongue that I've seen on a trail shoe this season. So that's pretty nice. The one drawback I really don't like that they integrated into the shoe, their supposed gaiter that they have, which is what they're calling it, around the ankle. You real, I have thin ankles, I'll say, narrow feet, so it really takes some cinching down around the ankle for that to actually work, cinching down up on the top here. I tried a runner's knot, kind of put the tightness too far down on the laces to keep that gaiter around the ankle tight. So I had to use a regular lacing system and really had to cinch it down in order for that to tighten up. But eventually it did work out once the shoe, all the compartments uh, started to stretch out a little bit. Has a nice pull tab, ample room on the back of the shoe. Nothing on the front. There is no gator hooks on the front or the back. But on this shoe, they're probably not going to integrate that because of what they put in on the ankle. Around the ankle portion or back of the shoe, very well reinforced with almost a heavy nylon material below the ankle compartment, this black part here. Yeah, there's an extra heavy sewn-in uh, membrane all along to give additional support back there. Very nice padded inside the ankle compartment to lock in your heel. Has a flexible but sturdy heel cup back here. Let's go down to the midsole. The midsole, as I said, Zumix foam, but a little bit firmer than you would get on the Alpha Fly or Vapor Fly. So I have my little durometer checker here. So let's check out what that is. I did it a little while ago, so I already know what it's going to come out to. In the heel, I get 47 and a half, 40, right down on the bottom, 30.5, on the forefoot, 43. 40. So I'd say 40 on the forefoot and on the heel, midsection on the outsole, 46, okay? which is a little bit on the firm side. But I'll tell you that this is softening up pretty nicely. You do not want it too cushy because what's that going to do, the, the softer the cushioning on a trail shoe, the less responsive it's going to be. It is pretty stiff, but I'll tell you when out on the trails, you're not even going to feel that stiffness. Uh, what that stiffness is going to give you is a lot of protection on the trails, not letting your foot twist too much underneath. Let's look at the outsole. We have Nike, I'll say proprietary rubber on the bottom, very hard rubber, very sectionalized as far as the lug types. They are four millimeters in length, a little bit softer rubber on the midsection of the foot. So that will give it some pretty good flex while you're out on the, the trails. The different type of lugs on the shoe, if you see them on the front here, they are kind of angled to the front, kind of V to the front, then on the heel, you will have them v to the back. Now, in trail shoes, for those of you who don't know, the reason shoe company to do that is on the front, it's so when you're towing off, those lugs, which are v to the front, are going to dig in and break you, your forefoot from slipping as you're towing off. On the heel, they're v to the back to act as a braking system if you're coming down on your heel. So they're V to the back, so as that V is coming down, it's kind of poking into the dirt, but as your foot's going down, it's then, and your foot's going forward, it's going to trap, dirt's going to get trapped in this V here, 
on the forefoot or moving forward. I really liked the grip on the shoe, didn't have any type of slippage. As I said in the beginning, this is a very rugged design shoe all around as far as all the accents and everything. I would not wear this shoe probably in a race unless uh, I've got a little bit more mileage on it and that midsole really softened up a, l a little bit more. My body weight fluctuates between 160 to 165, um, 5 feet 10 inches tall. So that kind of tells you body weight wise and firmness. If it uh, feels a little bit firm to me at a race weight of 160, usually to 163, you know how much you weigh. If you weigh more than 165, it may be a good firmness for you. If you're really looking for a shoe that's probably going to last you over 600 miles, I'd put this on the radar from the well-constructed upper with all the inlays to the hard rubber on the outsole. Now, the one last thing I want to go over is the sock liner or the insole, which is one of the nicer ones I've seen. Very contoured, has a cupping on the heel, so that's going to keep your heel locked in. On the bottom, underneath, is, and this is a pretty thick, sock liner. It's not a styrofoam feeling rubber on the bottom or a plasticky feeling, but an actual sticky rubber feel on the bottom, which is pretty nice. So what that's going to do also is if you're going through any type of wet terrain on the, the trails, that's going to keep any water below your foot and not coming through the sock liner onto your foot. Another nice integrated item into the shoe. Overall, I'll give it a thumbs up. Initially, when I first started wearing the shoe, as I said, I really didn't like it too much. I didn't think I was going to like it or even wear it too much after the first two or three times. But I hung in there, put the miles in over time, and I'm really starting to enjoy it. Took a little time getting there, but it's a fun shoe if I'm out on some long technical trails that I know my shoes are really going to be beaten up on. This is a good shoe to have on your feet. So, Dr. Dave for Push to Run. I'll see you on the next videos, and I hope to be commenting to you down below after you say I subscribe. See you on the trail. Peace.